<laughs> okay, so let me start again, so it will be uh, in the recording clearly. My name is Andrei Zelenko. Uh, you may know me from my Port 1 path, but here I'm with WebTrade, and this is about developing front-end communication applications. And what do these things would have in common? A site which does tarot card reading. Craigslist, and for those not from North America, this is an uh, online marketplace where you can buy, sell things such as like Wallapop or OLX, and typical mobile operator in South Africa. Or what they have in common, it's they all would need voice or video communication app to serve their customers better. So we're going to talk about how they can get that app working how we can get that app on the market in the shortest possible time frame with least amount of resources involved. And now I'll be only talking about the problems in the app development for which we have some ideas how to solve them. There are many other problems, some of them we discussed during the last two days, which are out of scope of this presentation. Second, I do consider, I take it for granted, that if somebody wants to develop a communication app today, they will use WebRTC. There are some options available, just like you can potentially write a website in COBOL, but like, why would you do this? So WebRTC is de facto standard. And uh, I'll be talking about some experience about the projects. It's mostly based on the data which I observed. I was involved in those projects, mostly with Telco, mostly with Portal and customers. Sadly, many of these projects, when people tried to develop their own communication app, they failed and most of them were not happy with the result. So if you have your own stories, good one, that was good, was successful and or was unsuccessful and come and find me, tell me. It will be interesting to extend my statistics so I can uh, tell more stories or I can use this factual data to direct our development better and you can do it here or contact me later on via LinkedIn or email. We're all software developers here. We all know the story. You ask software engineer when's going to be ready, he says next week, and then two or three months later the answer is the same, next week. What I do observe, for communication applications it's actually even worse. And there are some objective reasons for that compared to, say, developing just a web application. There are more unknown variables which are outside of our control, outside of our normal domain knowledge. So the person who is trying to do estimate, they simply don't know about them yet, and these things are going to pop up later on, and they're going to significantly delay the project. And uh, this, this is true for pretty much every project which I observed. So the idea is how we can make it not as bad as it is now. Uh, one of the problems which somebody who is developing a communication app would face, as I said, WebRTC, it is a standard. But uh, as declared by WebRTC, you have a full freedom of choosing a signaling protocol. And when I say bazaar, it has no negative cultural connotations. I'm referring to the famous book, The Cathedral in the Bazaar, by Eric Raymonds when he compares this like, structured and closed world of enterprise software with this like, volatile and a bit crazy world of open source. And here we have this crazy world of open source to its extreme. Every system would offer its own API. Plus, some of these APIs, they, what they try to do, they try to emulate basically voice therapy signaling over some web protocols. And I'll talk about later why it's not optimal. And then there is a ch question of choosing CPaaS vendor. And I'm a member of a few Facebook groups for SaaS founders, and their typical question is there. Okay, we build our app, we launched it, and we sign up with a CPaaS provider X, and now we realize, okay, it's getting kind of expensive, and we don't have money to keep paying them, and we don't have money to do a refactoring to do something else, and then stuck in this situation. And uh, CPaaS and those, those brand new platforms such as Twilio, they're great if you have this totally new application which exists in this 
world of native cloud and everything. Most of the projects, they will be connected to some existing VoIP systems, some of those could be legacy, which may not have as like brand new APIs or ability to do the connections. So how to deal with that, how to allow your app to be still connecting and still making calls through the system and uh, not getting crazy during the development. And some of the systems, they have such an API. Uh, in Eastern Europe, they ha we have a measure of complexity saying you have to drink a bottle of vodka to understand this. So some of the systems, they have a level of complexity, but I will be totally passed out drunk before I even start to understand. And actually, the choice which CPaaS provider should you choose it's a wrong choice because even most of them they pitch or oh, switch to us, we're cheaper than X. Well, yes, but who guarantees that the company Y, which is cheaper than X today, is not going to be way more expensive next month when you already kind of got hooked into their APIs and you cannot really change? And it's funny how history kind of repeats itself because. VoIP was in exactly the same situation about 20 years ago, and we invented the beautiful thing called discos routing. The idea is the control of which carrier to use should be on your side, because it's totally possible that for a company, they would use uh, Telnix for US calls and messages, Synch for European, and if they have customers in South Africa, they may find some local company which will offer the best rates. So they do want to keep, have some control over that on their side. and of course the development resources. 10 years ago, I was at some IT conference and there was a lady from HR agency and she said, well, you're all complaining about how difficult it is to find engineers, software engineers, IT specialists, but in the near future, you would understand what, what you have now is actually good. And she was right. <laughs> Things got only worse since then. And there are not that many professional developers of communication apps and probably a majority of them are in this room or listening to us online right now. So for most of the project you would need to find some external people. And uh, experience shows that regular front-end developers, they hate learning things related to VoIP. In Porto one actually we have back-to-back uh, -back user agents written in Python and it turns out for us it's more efficient we hire people who have experience in network programming and they typically C or C++ programmers and we teach them Python. But the other way, because people who come from Python background, usually their experience with internet is they wrote a web scraping script and that's about it. So it takes way too long for them to understand it was, uh, the packets and all the things inside there. Plus, if you want to have versions for iOS, for Android, and then for PC, usually it ends up you have duplications of a team and not many companies can afford that. And then of course, can you really compete with bigger guys who have a large team developing all these cool features? And the last one is probably the most important one. There are some, there are plenty of platforms which offer you WebRTC servers, they offer some API, so you can build an application, but building an application, it's a process when, oh, let's say you want to build a tree house for your kids. And you have this idea, you know what you want. But when you go to the construction store, you are overwhelmed by choice because now you realize, okay, you have to choose okay, which wooden planks do you need, how many of them, what kind of tools, what kind of nails. And I can relate to that, I was installing blinds on the windows in my daughter's bedroom and I was successful only from a third try. So for projects like this usually because developers they don't have enough experience, it they make wrong architect architectural decisions which we have to redo, or they spend too much time implementing some basic things. So for instance uh, in Craigslist they need an application which allows me to receive phone calls related to my ads on disposable numbers. So when my ads Ed is offline, nobody can call me, nobody can bother me. So they need just to, to maybe to show when they have incoming calls, it will so, say, somebody's calling you about your ad selling your old car. So that's it. They don't want to deal with like, push notifications or some other things, but they will have to if they develop it from scratch. So how can we deal with all of that? 
What if there would be a solution which allows easy to use API so it's something a regular front-end developer can understand? And you get the application, not a bunch of examples which you have to assemble together, but you get full source code for actually working app for soft phone or for web, which you can use from day one. And it allows you to be connected to any VoIP system, which is uh, OpenSIPs, um, Twilio, Asterisks, by writing your own adapter, just a few API mapping functions. And it is written in Dart Flutter, so it's cross-platform, so you can reduce your engineering team because you then have to duplicate it to different platforms. Well, that's what WebTree does. We provide a backend, which runs in the cloud, which does a conversion between client communication done in the API and WebRTC. It converts it to normal, regular SIP traffic, which goes to the VoIP system. And it uses adapter, which can be written by you to connect to your own proprietary storage of user information. So we can authenticate uh, the user or get information about his or her contacts. And as I said, the source code for the app, the whole app, not just example, is on the GitHub. You actually get the Flutter app, and then you get as a bonus, it's a pure web application written in Vue.js, just as an example, because again, there are not that many Flutter developers compared to JavaScript developers. And usually have been asked, how can it be connected to existing system? Because typically people would have something like Kamaio or Open or OpenSIPs, and then they have their own database with user data. So it's just a microservice uh, which does API mapping and allows to contact, uh, connect and extract the data. We have also, it's an open source project in fast API Python, which you can use and just write your own functions, or you can potentially write it in any language or framework you want. So coming back to my treehouse example. So WebTree, it's like getting a fully assembled, fully installed treehouse from day one. And the only thing you would need to do is if you need a different color, you paint it. Or if you need to change some things, you just change those small things. So for a developer to start using WebTree, you download the source code, you test it with our demo server, you create API adapter to connect to your storage of user data if you need to. You do customization, you maybe add some screens of functionality or for just visual branding, colors and fonts, we offer visual editor. And you make yourself happy, your customers happy. How can you contribute to open source development for WebTree? Well, obviously, fixes and improvements in the app itself. I remember many years ago when I got my first bug report from GitHub, I think, and I felt like embarrassment while well, somebody found out they wrote bad code. Now when I get bug reports, I'm actually joyful because, okay, somebody is using it and it's important enough for them so that actually they spend time to fix it and to report it, so it's great. Uh, to add new functionality, because there are plenty of things which can be added into the apps based on the market, based on the specifics. So we hope there's going to be a community of adding those things. Um, we have some customers in Africa and for instance there, they have problems sometimes the local currency is so devalued, it's like stacks of papers which not really worth anything, so it's inconvenient. So people when they go to buy groceries, they pay with megabytes out of their bundle. So if you want to buy milk, they pay 50 megabytes and to the guy who sells milk and then the milkman buys uh, his beer with 100 megabytes. So somebody, a local provider there would need just a regular app but with additional uh, screen for doing these transfers or something else. Uh, we're looking for people who will contribute adapters to more VoIP systems so more people can use it out of the box by just adding some configuration, and also embedding WebRTC into calling widget for HubSpot, or and a plugin for WordPress, which puts this call me button, or anything else. There are plenty of web applications with their own infrastructure for plugins, and it makes sense for somebody who's already familiar with that ecosystem just to add the functionality there.
So I hope I persuaded people who listen that if you have a friend or colleague or partner who is starting to develop an, a communication app, they can save time by just building it on top of WebTreat. And I've been in Telco for 25 years, and most of you also, uh, also have been here for a long time. But this is a potential not just for Telco people, but for SaaS obligations. And these are actually the ones who probably benefit the most because they have the least experience with all this like, communication and networks and everything. So if we can get word out to them, we can save them time and we can get new and cool applications which will appear in the market much sooner. And one final remark. I really wish that this presentation would be given by CTO of WebTreat, Yuri Chanyavsky. He deserves it the most. He cannot travel here since the Russia invaded Ukraine and the war started. Him and many other Web3 team members, they cannot travel. They wake up at nights for air raid alerts. So I asking you if you can continue contributing, continue helping Ukraine by donating to Ukrainian funds or just writing a letter to a government representative asking for more support for Ukraine because the more support Ukraine will get, the sooner it will be over and we can all live in peace. Thank you very much.